In this video, we will cover section 1.4, continuity and one-sided limits. Um, and this is examples part three, okay? This problem says, use the intermediate value theorem to show that the polynomial function has a zero in the interval zero to one. And then it gives me the function here. Now I have gone in and labeled um, the endpoints of my interval a and B and the reason I did that is because I'm going to have to use this intermediate value theorem and if you recall it's down here at the bottom of the page from um, the lecture video but down here at the bottom it says if F is continuous on the closed interval a B so see the first endpoint is a the second endpoint is B which is why I labeled 0 a and I labeled 1 b on the problem here my interval from a to b now some other things that I'm gonna have to figure out is f of a and f of b so we'll just put that here and my a being 0 and f of b with my b being 1 we'll calculate that in a little bit there's some other things that I have to uh, label here it says k is any number between f of a and f of b, okay? So we have to show that um, k is between f of a and f of b. So like this, okay? And in my case, it would be f of zero, some k value, and f of one, okay? Remember, k is a y value. So we'll talk about that y value, what it is in a minute. Then it says that um, if that k is between these two numbers, and if these two numbers don't equal, then there exists at least one number c in the interval, such that f of c equals k. So remember, c is going to be in the interval. So that means zero, C, and one, okay? C will be an interval. Now we don't know if this exists just yet. Um, this is an X value here. We want to show the premise of the um, intermediate value theorem before we can actually conclude what the intermediate value theorem is telling us, okay? So the first two things that we need to show is that um, f of a or f of zero and f of b which is f of one are not the same that's one of the first key things that we want to show that f of a does not equal f of b so in my case that means um, f of zero does not equal f of one now let's go verify that if I calculate f of zero this is my function here which means I would be plugging in zero for all of my x's, which would give me a negative one. Then if I wanna find f of one, I would be um, plugging in one for all of my x's in my function. So one cubed plus two times one minus one. And here, this one and the negative one would cancel and I'd be left with just two. So I get two for f of one. And these two are in fact not equal. So I have um, satisfied the first part of the intermediate value theorem. The second criteria is that your k value has to be within f of a and f of b. So your k value has to exist within these two y values. So the k value here has to be between negative one and two, because that's what I got for f of a and f of b. Okay, but what k value are we talking about here? It's a y value. Now remember, the problem says to show that the polynomial has a zero in this interval. What is a zero? A zero is an x-intercept. And what are the y values of any x-intercept? The y value is zero for any x-intercept. Think of your graph, right? 
x-intercepts lie on the x-axis. I don't know where the x-intercept is, which one of these dots it is, if any of these, but I do know that the y value for every single one of those points is zero, okay? So that means that my k value is zero. That's what I'm trying to find here. So then the question is, is zero in between negative one and two? And it is. Therefore, the second criteria of the intermediate value theorem holds. If I have these two criteria, the intermediate value theorem tells us that there exists a C, which is an X value, such that F of C equals K or in our case, f of c equals zero, because our k value that we're talking about is zero. Well, if there's an x value that gives me a y value of zero, then that means that c is a zero. Remember, we call the x values zeros because they give us y value zeros okay so your zero is the x-intercept which is an x value but how do you find it you find when the y value is equal to zero and that's what gives you that x value and since we've proven that there is such an x value that exists that will give us zero that means that the x value is called a zero Okay, so it's a little tricky with the vocabulary. So you've got the zero number is the Y value and the zero label or title is the word zero, not necessarily the number zero. Okay.